And anytime germs are afoot, everybody wants to do this. They're like, oh, I'm not feeling well, I'm not feeling well. Just elbow, just give, give me the elbow bump. Give me the elbow bump. The elbow. The elbow. The thing I've been sneezing and coughing into for three years. How desperate are we to touch each other, man? My goal, my singular focus in life was get a food television show. I wanted to host a show on television that had everything to do with food. And, and there was nothing, nothing was going to stop me except everything. But, you know, in my mind, I was like, I can do this. And I started doing stand-up comedy to, because there was no way to practice having a food show. So I was like, I could do these open mics and I could uh, treat the audience like a studio audience. I could develop food jokes, just build my confidence and, you know, treat it like a recording studio environment. And uh, as it happened, I fell in love with stand-up the minute I stepped on stage. So all of a sudden, I had these two goals, food and comedy. But, but the idea of comedy originally was to get more of a, uh, you know, get a, more of a foothold into the food world. But you did go to school, though, for business, right? So, like, how did the chefery come into things here? Now, you're, now we're, if, we, if people start budgeting, like, wait a minute, how much did this guy spend on his education? I do have a bachelor's, I have a master's, and I have an IT degree. $22,000 <laughs> for that one. Who's counting? Um, never used it. But I finally was like, I want to do something for me. The business degree was for my dad. The IT degree was because I didn't know what else I was going to do. When I said I want to be a chef, my parents were like, don't be an idiot. What are you talking about? You can't be a chef. In Pakistan, we slap chefs on the back of the head. And I'm like, well, that's a bad comment on you and Pakistan. I don't <laughs> want to be a chef in Pakistan. I want to be a chef in Quebec where they say merci chef, bonsoir chef. Um, but in the end, it was like... Um, I finally said, I'm going to be a chef. And I couldn't bear the thought of going to school again. And I'd been cooking in various capacities since I was a teenager, started with sandwiches, moved on to chili and pasta sauces. And by my 20s, I was cooking on a regular basis. So I was like, I have a good foundation here. I have a thirst. I have a knowledge. I have a love for this. I'm not going back to school. Okay, so you did the chef thing and you're doing the comedy thing simultaneously. Yeah. At one point, though, like after how many years did yeah. comedy raise above the chef title? Because we are in the Canadian media industry and that can be a really tough go. No, you're absolutely right. I came here to Toronto from Montreal. I got married to my wife. I had these two young daughters and I knew... I had some some skills in the kitchen that I could I could translate from Montreal to Toronto. I was like, I'll start a catering company. So I'm looking at like I, I'm starting, you know, getting a location, how much it'll cost, insurance. If I have a you know a hood, then that's more insurance above the oven. If I have a door onto the street, that's more. It costs more. So these are and I have no money, and I'm like, well, this is going to cost me a lot. And then these companies are like, oh, you're a comedian. Can you come to Mississauga? Can you come to Burlington? Can you come to Oakville? We need you for 30 minutes. And the amount that they would pay me was the same amount I would make on a catering gig. But a catering gig was shopping, prepping, you know, preparing, uh, delivering, setting up, breaking down, cleaning, or take a drive to Burlington, make people laugh for 30 minutes and come home. And I was like, I think I, think I can't be a caterer anymore. How much does the act and what you're doing change for the audience that you're speaking to from gig to gig? You know, I have a lot of stuff that I'm passionate about. Um, everyone is going to hear my 10 minutes about shawarma, whether they want to <laughs> or not. Now, I say that, but if I'm in a city and people are like, we don't really know what that is, because I'm going to the small towns in BC, and I'm, I'm hoping they know what shawarma is, but if they don't, I'll have to change a little bit on the fly. But most of it is very personal, very much about things that happened to me and happened in the life you know, of a guy with food. People are going to hear about the triangular stain on, my, on, my, on the seat of my car because of all the food I eat in my car and drop. And that's, you know, I'm hoping that that relates across this country. I'm hoping people know at least one person who ate, eats way too much food in their car. 